Hey everyone, it's WWE Fan 1993. Thank you for checking out my uh, video. Today we are going to be going over Friday Night SmackDown. It's my first SmackDown recap. So I, that was from July 24th, last Friday. And um, I have my guest co host today. Yep, you can find him on Instagram. He posts a lot of recaps of what happened during Raw and SmackDown and pay-per-views. Um, he also did a memorial on Randy Savage Day, so there's a lot of cool content there. Before we jump into uh, Friday Night SmackDown, let me tell you that make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell to get notified when new content is created. Also, make sure you comment. I love to hear what you guys think, your reactions to SmackDown. Um, and all of your comments. So, Carlos, let's jump right into it. So, we open SmackDown with um, the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley. And um, I don't know if they are considering her now the Raw Women's Champion, but the Raw Women's Champion, the boss, Sasha Banks, they're also the Women's Tag Champions. Um, they come out, and there's a picture of them on the Titantron holding all the four titles of Extreme Rules. Sasha said that the women's evolution is over because it began with her and Bailey, and now it ends with Sasha and Bailey. Um, they're interrupted by Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Um, Cross basically said that she's upset what happened at Extreme Rules, and she demands a SmackDown women's title shot tonight. Bailey tells Nikki that she'd be willing to give her another title shot, the title, another shot at the title, as long as she could defeat her best friend Alexa Bliss. The winner gets to face Bailey next week on SmackDown. Bliss seemed a little bit reluctant, but Cross was so obsessed with getting another title shot that she shoved Bliss on the floor. So, Carlos, you saw this segment live. What did you think of it? So now I w go ahead, man. And then um, um, with Sasha and Bailey, they came out. They said that they're the new definition of greatness, and that this and that, and that like they hold because they hold all the gold. Yeah. And then I guess again, I guess um, Nikki was just so obsessed about becoming getting getting another shot. She just blacked out and just said, push, shoved her on the floor. Do you think that that will kind of lead to Alexa Bliss and Nikki? having um a rivalry now they're gonna split up yeah that will be interesting to see and i know that you're a big sasha banks fan and we will get into extreme rules what do you think of her being right now the raw women's champion Yep. Yeah, we'll have to want, when we you could check out our Extreme Rules recap and as we go over Extreme Rules, but we'll get into that later, but um yeah, right now is interesting. I did Yeah, it was it was a great match between the two of them. Um, the ending, eh, we'll get into uh, with Extreme Rules. But I like seeing them holding both titles. The only thing I have is I've been looking forward to Sasha and Bailey going at it again. And um, I thought that was kind of the scenario going into the horror show at Extreme Rules. But obviously it was different. So I just hope that the tag team will split up and we'll see Bailey and Sasha at SummerSlam, but I don't see that happening. Unless Bailey accidentally crosses, will screw Sasha in her match tonight, then maybe.
just one of them. So let's go to the match. Well, yeah, and that will come into play a little bit because there have been champions who have gone at it. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, they were tag team champions. They had a rivalry. Um, a lot of past tag champions went at it. So maybe we'll see. But let's get into the match. Um, Nikki Cross ends up beating Alexa Bliss after um, – Let's see how she – how did she end up winning? Was it a small package? Yeah, so basically what happened was um, you saw Extreme Rules how, um, how after, towards the ending, Sasha gave Bailey her revenge match. Yeah. And then Bailey was like, oh, Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would be upset too if like my friend screwed me over by pretending to get injured. Um. Mhm. Now she's getting a taste. Yep, she sure did. And then backstage, um, after the commercial break. Alexa catches up with Nikki, and she says, oh, you know, you got one over on me. She congratulates Nikki and tells her to focus on becoming the new champion. I'm kind of with you. I think Alexa might screw Nikki over just based on, okay, you beat me. Now you could be champion. I don't know, but that's kind of what I think that is leading to as well. Yeah, I, I felt the same way going into Extreme Rules, but it didn't happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's really sad um, that some of these cool wrestlers that come out, they're not able to get the reaction that they deserve because there's no fans. So now we jump into the Firefly Funhouse. Um, they show the highlights from the Swamp Fight last Sunday at Extreme Rules. Well, not last Sunday, but two weeks ago. Um, he appears at the Fire... Well, yeah, a week ago. He appeared at the Firefly Funhouse... And uh, Bray has his severed head lantern, the head which is supposed to symbolize the old version of Wyatt. Um, Bray begins to hear whispers in his head from the lantern. The current iteration of Bray tells his old form that he's not letting him out again and that he had his chance. Bray finishes this up by saying it's his turn now, referencing the Fiend, whom we saw emerge from the swamp at the end of Extreme Rules. Setting his sights on Braun Strowman. So basically, Bray Wyatt is saying that, you know, no longer Bray Wyatt, uh, the Fiend will be released. So, what do you think of the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, all that good stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of didn't like how we were left off with two people not sure who the champions were at the end of the show. But, so, all right, yeah, so, I mean, I'm interested in The Fiend. I do think that they have to do a bit more with him because I do like him. I like Bray, but it's kind of getting a little stale. I was excited to see him pop back up again. But hopefully they continue on with The Fiend because his character is so dynamic and different and um yeah yeah i know he fought finn balor and then finn balor goes to nxt and turns heel so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah so maybe that they're trying to do something with that yeah i I like him. I'm just waiting for something new. Next, we go to Tony Nese taking on Matt Riddle. Um, they said it was a fairly quick match with Matt Riddle picking up the win after a bro Derek. 
After the match, Matt Riddle calls out King Corbin. Um, King Corbin says that Matt Riddle isn't allowed to be in his kingdom. Corbin says that he's so confident that Riddle doesn't belong that he's putting out a king's ransom on him. Matt Riddle then informed King Corbin that he's the next guest on the bro show. Uh, Tony needs to try to immediately collect on that ransom, but he had a kick to his head for his efforts, and Riddle celebrated to close the segment. What did you think of the match and the segment? Yeah, ba- basically what he basically meant that he was going to give somebody money for taking out Matt Riddle. Like, he, yeah, he basically put like bribery on like, hey, if you, you know, beat him up, I'll give you like $10,000. So he basically put a target on Matt Riddle's head. Well, there you go. He's calling on Randy Orton. Um, so I'm going to give you my take on it. I'm over King Corbin. Um, for some reason, I like him as a person, but as an in-ring competitor, I don't really care for Baron Corbin. I think his gimmick has been crappy. I think the matches that he's been putting on have been crappy. Um, this is through, I'm reading this information through CBSSports.com, and they gave this whole segment a C. Matt Riddle deserves to be fighting with people like AJ Styles, Ricochet, people that could build him up. Tony Nese and King Corbin do nothing for Matt Riddle's character. And I don't understand why they put these big talents up against people that you already know are going to lose. Like, I do not see King Corbin coming out of this rivalry with a win, but... Also, we're going to move now to Ms. TV. Naomi is a guest. So last week there was a trend on Twitter. Naomi deserves better, um, basically in support of Naomi following her loss to Lacey Evans. So Naomi comes back to the ring and thanking everyone for their support because they're what keeps Naomi going. Ms. and John Morrison point out how it doesn't make sense that she garnered all the attention for losing. But Naomi says that they need to ask themselves why Lacey Evan intact her instead. Um, Miz and Morrison brought out Lacey as a surprise guest. Evans was able to get in a verbal jab about Naomi not advancing despite being around for a decade. Before Naomi forced Lacey Evans from the ring and danced with her hat. So what did you think of that segment? Yeah. Yeah, and then I feel like John Morrison and Miss are trying to get under her skin the whole time. Like, really, they really rile her up. Really bad. And then they brought, when they brought on Lacey Evans, it just got heated up even more. Because, like, she came out, like, putting on her makeup. Mm hmm. Okay, so Naomi versus Lacey Evans. Let me just give my take on this, too. Again, why are they putting Naomi against Lacey Evans? They're saying... She's actually really good. She's, she's, I mean, like, she's... Hasn't been winning lately, but... The thing is that, though, think about it, though, right? If you want someone like Naomi to be on top, wouldn't you want her to fight, even if she were to lose, but fight against Bailey, Sasha, um... You know, Asuka, Kyrie Sane. Lacey Evans is good, but once again, like a King Corbin, a mid card who is it going to really elevate Naomi? If Naomi were to get a win, even against like Alexa Bliss or a Nikki Cross, I mean, that would kind of, I don't see her beating Lacey Evans as a big win for her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like. Yeah, like, I like Lacey. I think she's a great person. I, you know, respect her for fighting in the, you know, in the Army military. Um, I think she's a great person, and she's a good wrestler, but her, you you already know they're going to beat her. So it's just like, I want to see Naomi 
up against more people. And maybe if they were to do another draft, I just think the women's division on SmackDown is very poor right now. And Lacey Evans obviously isn't the person that they're moving up. So why is Naomi fighting her? I don't know. But next we go to Big E and Kofi Kingston talking backstage. They're talking about their tag team title loss. Um, Kofi tells Big E that he'll likely be out for six weeks with an injury. Big E was upset about the news, but with a smile on his face, Kofi told Big E that it's now his time to shine as a single star with both Kofi and Xavier Woods on the shelf. Big E gets nervous at first, and then he embraces Kingston and thanks him for the opportunity. So now it seems like Big E is going to have his chance. What did you think of this segment? And do you think, how far do you think they're going to push Big E? I feel like, you know, it's going to go pretty far. Maybe the IC championship, maybe. Okay. I could see that. Again, second, it was for a second time. Yeah. Or I think they draft him, like, to a different brand and then leave the rest of the New Day by themselves, you know, maybe it'll be farther for him. Call me crazy, but I would like to see a Drew McIntyre and Big E match. Yeah, he, he's a beast. Yeah, I'm happy they're going to push him. He's a great talent. Next, we have the number one contendership triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. We have Shorty, well, actually a fatal four. What am I talking about? A triple threat. We have Shorty G, Drew Gulak, Lince Dorado, and Graham Matalik fighting for this match. Basically, um, Matalik won after he hits an elbow drop on Shorty G. After the match, AJ Styles enters the ring. He offers Matalik a handshake, but um, Matalik didn't accept it, and AJ slapped him in the face. After that, um, AJ Styles went to attack Dorado, and Graham Matalik put him down with a tornado DDT, and that was it. So... How are you feeling about Graham Matalik and AJ Styles next week or whenever they have a match? Honestly, I, I do not want to see it. Yeah? I'm just really rooting for Lince Dorado. Okay. Um, okay. Um, what? Like really, um, yeah. What do you feel like is different? Because I don't really pay attention to the Lucha House Party. What do you think is the main difference between Dorado and Matalik? I feel like Dorado is more like high flyer. They're, they're all high flying, but, but I feel like he's improved the most in the ring. Okay. So this person, whoever wrote this article, said that they think they will. this match will steal the show. Um, I feel you. I was kind of underwhelmed when I found out that Graham Matalik was going to win. Drew Gulak is also a great competitor, so that would have been a good match too, a difference of styles. But, um, you know, we get what we get. <laughs> like I tell my kids at work, you get what you get and you can't get upset. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. But, yep, that's our new number one contender, Graham Matalik. Um, next, we go backstage, and the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, are with Kayla Back Braxton. They talk badly about the New Day. They make fun of Kofi Kingston's injury. Cesaro says that it's not Biggie's time to shine, while Shinsuke said that every tag team will go splat. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I think I do like, yeah, I like Shinsuke and Cesaro working together. I agree with you. Lately, they've been kind of boring, 
but they dominated that Extreme Rules match, and I was pretty impressed. So we'll see what happens um, in the following weeks. But yeah, I'm okay with them being champions. It doesn't really bother me much. So this next match is on the more controversial spectrum. A lot of people have been saying, should we use Jeff Hardy's alcohol abuse in storylines? Matt Hardy disagrees with his whole storyline and thinks it's stupid. But Jeff can't really argue. He has to do what he has to do. So this match is a bar fight. And it's Jeff Hardy against Sheamus. This match was supposed to take place at the horror show, but it was moved to Friday Night SmackDown. Um, Yeah. Maybe they knew it wasn't good. Maybe they felt like they already had two cinematic matches that they didn't want to do. Another one? I don't know. Um, but basically, they fought at Irish Shannon's Pub in Orlando. And um, Jeff ended up winning after a swanton off the ladder. It says the finish came after Sheamus believed he put Hardy away for good with a cheer shot to the back. And he placed his hat over Hardy's face before walking to the bar to get a drink. When he returned and removed the hat... Hardy's face was painted, and the fight reaches conclusion not long after. Um, so that was the end of the match. What did you think of the match as a whole and the storyline? Do you think it will be the I end of it? Like, I feel like it would have been better at Extreme Rules, but it was really good. Yeah. I liked it. It was really good. What do you think of them incorporating Jeff Hardy's real personal issues um, in the storyline? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember even being young in 2005, 2006 when Lita cheated on Matt Hardy, that storyline was integrated and it was huge and everywhere and I was surprised that they would allow that personal personal stuff to get out there, but I guess it's entertainment, you know, it kind of you know, you do what you do with the crime, you know, you have to pay for it, and, you know, maybe this is a way to kind of redeem him. I don't know. But that was it for Friday Night SmackDown. Um, what would you give this show? Um, an A being the best, F being the worst. I would maybe give it a B minus. A B minus? Okay. So I didn't see it, but reading about it, I'd probably give it a C. Or even a D. I don't really think much is happening. Um, I'm kind of hard on it. But I just remember when it was good in 2016 and 2017. And I just think SmackDown is once again the show that doesn't matter. But... I feel like maybe they're lacking Roman Reigns, honestly. Yeah, they're lacking something. It's just like, it's missing something. The people, maybe it's just they don't have enough talent on the brand. I don't know. But... Next week, we're going to see the Intercontinental Championship on the line. AJ Styles defending his title against Graham Madalik. We're going to see um, the WWE Women's title on the line as the Women's Champion Bayley takes on Nikki Cross in a rematch from the Horror Show at Extreme Rules. We also are going to see Naomi take on Lacey Evans, and there will be much more. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell to stay notified, and let us know your thoughts. What did you guys think of SmackDown? What do you think of Grand Madalik as a number one contender? What did you think of the bar fight? How are you liking um, Naomi getting called, you know, kind of hopefully getting a rise? Big E. A lot of stuff going on this week. Carlos, why don't you tell everyone how they can find you? Yep, and definitely um, I will post that information out too so you can copy it and look for it. And we will be back next week with another SmackDown recap. Thank you for tuning in.